He's got the Otter Pops post-practice. Alex Johnson is with us. Yes, if you're watching the video <laughs> component, you can see them right there. He's a Bruin defensive back, former walk-on. Nick Cope with me. I'm Brian Fenley on the Bruin Insider Show. So excited to have you with us, Alex. And we're a game in. Yep. You got the start yes, sir. over the weekend. How would you size up your performance? Um, Consistent. It was pretty consistent. Um, From the first snap, it was kind of like – Get the jitters out. Get the first play jitters out. Um, first season jitters out starting. Um, but my, my, I felt my play was pretty consistent overall. Effort was good. Uh, locked in on all my plays. Uh, limited mental errors. And, uh, yeah, I felt like I was flying around on the field, yeah. It seemed like early on last season is when things started to turn for you a little bit. You were, right. you were more in the rotation mm -hmm. there playing that nickel spot. What have these last two years been like? How have you seen yourself grow as a player on the field? Um, I think my confidence has grown a lot, um, just being out there, getting the reps, um, feeling the, the trust that my teammates have in me, um, and then also just um, believing in myself, I think, just seeing myself out there and, like, telling myself that, yeah, I can do this, I can compete on the highest level with these guys, and I, I can be a playmaker on the outside. Not only are you a playmaker on the football field, but clearly in the classroom as Correct. well. You already have your undergrad degree yes, in political science. And I think about the onus on leadership right. in, in political science, how important that is. How do you take your degree and use it to what you're doing on the football field? You know, um, I use it as a kind of inspiration for the younger guys. It's like uh, I see myself as the the guy that they can look up to, like, okay, he's got his degree, he's, like, doing the right things on the field, but he's also doing the right things off the field. Um, and it also puts me in a place to, to be there to answer questions, to um, to expand on my, my knowledge for them. Like, I can use my knowledge um, as a way not just for myself, but to help them grow and learn as they grow up in their experiences here at UCLA. And you're one of the old guys, right? You're yeah. a six-year guy. I, I mean, you're you're five years older than some of the guys. What's yeah. that dynamic like? Um, it's it's really weird, honestly. I think it kind of hit me a couple years ago, maybe one or two years ago, with the new like TikTok wave and generation. I was like, oh man, maybe I really am old. Um, I'm only I'm only 22. I always say, which is kind of old, but still pretty young. Um, but it's fun, you know. I um, younger kids like Kamari Ramsey, they they keep me young. I say. Um, they keep me on the newest trends, like the newest waves and stuff like that, so they keep me in the game. That's funny. So even on a football team, there's almost like a, a slight generational right. divide. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. As far as the new trends mm -hmm. that Kamari is telling you about, what are they? What is he educating you on? Um, you, you know, new stuff with Madden. Um, kind of outdated on my video games. Oh, I haven't uh, played Madden in so long. No, I know. <laughs> it's been so long. Um, you know, I'm not on TikTok, actually, but – Whenever the new the newest TikTok sound comes out, he's always saying it. I'm like, bro, what are you what are you saying? Like, Seems like you don't need to be on TikTok. Right. Kamari's got you no, covered. Yeah, he's got me covered with all the all the uh, ins and outs of TikTok. You're on LinkedIn. I am on LinkedIn. Yes. The purpose behind that already getting the jump start. Right. Of course. Post football, whatever yeah, that is. Exactly. What made you do that? Um. So a couple years ago, I actually joined a business de business development course, um, and I was in that for about a year with my former teammate Elisha Gidry. Um, so, do you know, just uh, we prepared preparations for Microsoft, um, Dick Sporting Goods. I got invited to a couple of internships um, and, you know, worked on my worked on my uh, career building skills, you know, interviewing, um, um, talking to people, networking, stuff like that. So, I mean, having a LinkedIn page is kind of like a first step. And that's like another thing that goes back to uh, something that I'm trying to teach, like the younger guys, like that's something you need, like further on in your development and in, in your career. You've got a new position coach, Cody right. Woodfield. He's a Loyola guy like yes, you and obviously was here a couple of years ago as a yeah. grad assistant. What's it like having him back and leading you guys at corner? Oh, it's awesome. Uh, Cody's a great guy, great coach. Um, the year he wasn't here was really like, like I was felt like something was missing. You know, um, that year he was here before this current year, we would um, – after walkthroughs, we would do one-on-ones after practice together just to, like – Oh, that's fun. Like a little fun fun game, but also just, like, working on crab, getting tips here and there. But it's been awesome. You know, he's really expanded on his knowledge of the game of football. Um, he brings a lot of energy, high-intensity high, high intensity guy, but um, he makes sure that the corners and the safeties always are bringing it 100% whenever we're on the field. I also think you're bringing it 100% in this interview. Alex Johnson is with us, UCLA defensive back on the Bruin Insider Show. For Nick Cope, I'm Brian Finley. You said that one of the things that you'd worked on 
outside of the football field was interviewing. All right. So I want to ask you, how are Nick and I doing as far as interviewing you right now? Oh, great. So great. It's awesome. Great questions. Uh, great insight. I mean, it's awesome. It's amazing. Right. We, <laughs> need, we need the ego boost every yes. now and then. So, yes. so thanks for helping uh, us out. Uh, great. <laughs> I also want to ask about Dan Lynn as well, because right. he's a guy with a defensive back background coming right. in as the new defensive coordinator. What have you learned from him here throughout the offseason now going into the start of the season? Right. Um, just a, no a lot of great insight on the game of football, the ins and outs of techniques, different coverage drops, um, different alignments, disguises, um, something that I didn't really have uh, a background in before he came here. So I think his knowledge from the NFL – um, the film that he brings from the NFL and then just his experience, like coming from an NFL family, coming from a football family. Um, he just knows so much about the game. I'm just trying to soak everything in. And I think it's been great. I think that my game has uh, really increased on a, a level that's like kind of unexpected for me. But um, it's been great having him with the, with the program. When you're watching film, what mental checklist are you going through as Everybody has, I would think, certain things that they're looking for. Right. For you, what are you taking the metaphoric highlighter to when you're mm -hmm. watching your film? For me personally, I'm looking at, uh, first off, the, the receivers that we're going against that week, their speed, their height, um, do they run block effectively. Um, and then after that, I kind of hone in on splits, like seeing if they're closer inside the hash, are they running inside? More typically, when they move out wider, um, everything's like outbreaking, stuff like that. Um, and then after that, I kind of look at the look at what the quarterback is saying from his position. If he's honing in on me, if I move, if I cheat my alignment in a little bit, is he thinking I'm blitzing? Can I like play around with that a little bit? So that's just a little a little step into that world. Yeah. We heard a lot about the off season conditioning program right. here. Now that you have a game under your belt, did you feel the effects of that on oh, Saturday? Oh, 100%. I don't. I think this is the best conditioning shape I've been in my life. Um, we originally were supposed to be doing 150s, 150-yard shuttles. We ended up doing 300-yard uh, shuttles, not by accident, on purpose. Um, but, yeah, it was great. I mean, I felt like everybody on the, on the field Saturday was, like, ready to go. Even in the fourth quarter, we had a whole bunch of juice, a lot of energy. But uh, the offseason was great. The conditioning, the lifting program that KB had us on was amazing. I've heard so many great things from players all over the – all over the field talking about how good KB has been in. And I look at the fourth quarter right. last weekend against Costa Carolina, and you guys played your best. Exactly. There was a definite conditioning advantage there in what you were able to do. As far as individually, the way in which you look at your development compared to last year, obviously a lot of special teams mm -hmm. that you've done. But what are we seeing from you, and what are we going to see from you this year? And I know one sample size, one game, that we haven't seen from you in any other season right. here at UCLA. Um, I think I'll be able to I'll be able to showcase a lot a lot of my physicality a lot better. Just um, like you said, that uh, having a higher sample size of being on defense um, while also being on special teams, I still am on all four four core special teams. So which is great. Um, but yeah, uh, being able to showcase a lot more of my physicality as a nickel, I'm more than more times than not in the box. Tight end, tight end goes back. I got to fit in the box with the linebackers. So yeah, just got to show people that I can get big <laughs> in there with, the, with Darius and them. Yeah. <laughs> you got a very special honor here at UCLA wearing that number 36. Correct. And, and I saw on your Instagram, you said you had some pictures mm -hmm. from practice. You said honoring a legacy. Right. You got that honor at the beginning of last season, got on scholarship. What's it meant to you to be able to wear that number here for the Bruins? I think, I mean, it's meant everything. Um, I think it's a great testament to the journey that I've been on, but also a great testament to uh, Pasquale and who he was. Um, Ethan Frenea, who wore the jersey before me, the kind of player he was and still is. Um, and I think it's a legacy that should continue on for a long time as this program goes on. Um, UCLA has a great, rich history of walk-ons who come in, they do the work, they put in the grind, they stay here, they stay committed, they're loyal. And, I mean, I think it's a great way to show appreciation for what they do for the program. Pasquale, of course, a receiver, a walk-on who in 2013 unfortunately lost his life early. But if you think about the way that you're making him proud now, where do you feel like that is? Um... I think it's my attitude, uh, the way I come out every day, the way I uh, show my love for my teammates. I'm, I can never really have a bad day here. Um, I mean, it's, it's great being here every day. 
even when I wasn't playing as much as I am, I always had that attitude that, you know, like I'm what a blessing it is to be here, to be coached by such great coaches, to go to a, a great university, to have all these great benefits. Um, and I think as I've gotten these uh, accolades and accomplishments, that's, that's just grown more my appreciation for everything. When you were a walk on and, and you're on special teams and maybe not you're you're not in the rotation defensively as right. much as you would like. What kept you going and kept you on the path to where you are now? Um, I think it goes back to that dedication of the team. Like that was my role um, in that moment, and I was going to fulfill that role to my my full capabilities. Um, my second or third year here, I sat down with Coach Kelly actually, and he told me that I had a I had a role to play on this team, and that role was through special teams. So I kind of took that to heart. Um, and through that role, I was able to show that I can play defense and I can use my my uh, abilities to to like fill out a role on the defensive starting spot. So yeah. As we wrap this thing up, you've got a role on this team. Clearly, by everything you're doing outside of the football field, you've got a great purpose to this life. I think I kind of want his autograph, Nick. What do you think? <laughs> yeah. You might as well get it right now, yes. right now, yeah. before <laughs> you become big time. And whatever you do, just listening to you talk, man, you are crushing it, and you will continue to crush it. We're all so proud of you. Alex Johnson, thank you so much. UCLA defensive back for Nick Copa and Brian Fenley. Thanks so much for doing this. Thank this you. was such a pleasure to have you. It was a pleasure being here. Thanks for, me, for having me.